Welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe this minimally edited surgery. We can see the aqueous humor has turned turbid. Iris details are not seen. Intraocular pressure was in the range of 60 millimeter of mercury, which has been reduced to about 30 millimeter of mercury with anti glaucoma medications. So, this is a case of phacolytic glaucoma and after making the main incision, I uh, irrigate and aspirate the anterior chamber and I can see the iris details now and we can see a mature cataract and the nucleus is very hard. So, well, let us see how we can manage this case. A side port is made on the left side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away and air bubble is injected to fill up the anterior chamber. Tripan blue dye is taken and the tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. Little bit of adrenaline is injected to see if the people dilates little more or at least the dilated state is maintained. The dye is washed out with bases and now capsulorexis is to be done. The antechamber is filled up with viscoelastic substance. This is 2 percent hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. In some cases, in this kind of hypermature mercagnian cataract, the jonule is so weak that capsulorexis becomes almost impossible and the jonular tear happens. We may have to sacrifice the bag or we have, we have to do ICCE and place uh, iris supported intraocular lens. Let us see how the rexis goes. Yes, the journal is weak, but I have been able to make a puncture on the, I have been able to cut the anterior capsule with the sharp 26 gauge bent needle. Visco again. Now I take the iterator forceps and gently try to do a rexis, a medium sized rexis. Medium size because if I plan to do a large rixis and if this uh, capsular tag goes into jonule, it becomes very tough because the jonule is already weak. So, rixis is done very gently, very slowly, and I have been able to do, I will be able to get a rixis of about 5.5 millimeter, and this is good because the nucleus is hard. And now, I, as I push the nucleus, I find a gap, and quite a good gap through which uh, intraocular lens and intraocular lens can go into the capsular bag. Push the lens and find that yes, the gap is good, and I can easily place the lens in the bag. So my plan is to place the intraocular lens first behind this intact nucleus. I inject some more visco and with the Sinsky hook, Sinsky hook that goes through the side port, I uh, keep the opening and through this opening the intraocular lens goes behind the nucleus. And the intraocular lens goes into the capsular bag. Yes, I find that I can hook the rexis margin and definitely it has gone in the back. And now the nucleus is huge and we have to manage this nucleus. So, I have to be very cautious to protect the corneal endothelium. The posterior capsule is protected. But I have to be careful about the intraocular lens also 
because if I touch the intraocular lens with ultrasound, there can be pitting of the intraocular lens. But the lens is very thin and it has gone far back on the, uh, you know, it occupies a small space of the capsular bag. So, I am actually in the iris plane. And I am trying to eat up the nucleus, I trying trying to get a chop, but I find it very uh, leathery nucleus, very tough. So, I decide to eat it up gradually, keeping the posterior capsule uh, you know, intact, posterior capsule protected by the intraocular lens. I have to be careful to eat up the nucleus at the iris plane and I must not touch the intraocular lens with the tip of the phaco needle. These two things I have to keep in mind. Always careful to work at the iris plane far away from corneal endothelium, remaining always at the central part of the anterior chamber where the cornea is far above and the intraocular lens is far behind. Yes, the nucleus has been managed. And now uh, I use the you know Simcoe cannula to see if I can get some cortex, but there is no cortex in this case. All the cortex has been liquefied and it was converted into a milky fluid. So this is a typical hypermature Morganian cataract. Fortunately the uh, turbid fluid has not gone behind. At, I mean the turbid fluid which comes into anterior chamber sometimes it goes behind and the anterior vitreous becomes opaque. So, it has not happened in this case. This is a bit of uh, you know, canacord. I am checking if there is any jonular defect in any site and this uh, canacord will reduce the inflammation also because some, uh, though I wash it out, some particles, some molecules of triamcinolone acetate will remain and it will, it will uh, help in reducing the inflammation. And this is uh, you know, cleaning of the anterior chamber and placing the lens centrally. And now I have to close the side port. The corneal stroma, this is a bit of uh, novisco. Now the corneal stroma is hydrated by BSS and this side port closes. I have made only one side port. And now uh, I am checking if the, you know, lens is in the bag or not. I had some doubts in some places, but it is in the bag. So, the case is done here. I am checking if it is there. Yes, the lens is placed in the center. And now, a final lavage of the anterior chamber and formation of the anterior chamber by the Simco. Here goes the Simco and the Simco comes in the tunnel and the case is done. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.